I'm Greg Grandy, and I'm in Houston, Texas for an unusual kind of parade. These are known as art cars. Owners kind of find things and reuse them as decorations on their cars. Well, pretty much everything's recycled, like the uh, little plants that you see on there, we just got them from like fake plants that people might have had. Even the cars recycled, so we just kind of got a used car and put all this stuff on it. We use beads, shoes, uh, scraps of old glass. We use old scraps of material like velvet and satin and old toys from thrift stores. <laughs> We used some garden hose, uh, old newspapers, old paint that we had flying around the art department, wine glasses, wine bottles, everything you can imagine. So recycle! Recycle! To talk about reusing, something art car drivers do. Reusing, recycling, and reducing. Now you don't have to glue rubber chickens to your family car to reduce the amount of trash you generate. Let's take a ride back to the tackle shop and talk a little trash. Just check around your home and you'll see the type of garbage you generate. Let's take a look inside the tackle shop garbage can. Let's see, we've got some old orange peels, some banana peels, an aluminum can, a plastic bottle, and paper. Lots and lots of paper. Well, you know, these aluminum cans and plastic bottles are recyclable. Those are going in the recycle bin. This paper is too. Paper, by the way, makes up the largest part of what we throw in the landfill. And the fruit? You don't have to throw it in the garbage can. It can be put to better use. We put some fruit peels in the compost pile. Here at home, we have one in the yard. Some food scraps are good. Things like fruit and vegetables. But no meat, oil, or milk products. Those things draw critters to your compost. You know, composting is recycling naturally. Letting nature do it. Yep, that's gonna decompose and help make good soil. Some people who don't have lots of yard space can also buy plastic containers for a worm compost. This process is known as vermicomposting. With these red worms, you don't even need soil. You can compost by using old newspaper as bedding for the worms and feeding them some of the food scraps you throw away. Yeah, scraps like fruit, vegetables, and bread. This compost can be great for growing house plants. And you can tell people you're a vermi composter. Sounds pretty impressive, huh? Here's a great recipe for maximizing the decay process in your running compost pile. Let's see, you need lots of dry leaves. And about a fourth of the compost needs to be wet stuff, like food scraps and grass clippings. It also helps to add some water and stir it up every now and then. Mm. Mm. The stirring keeps oxygen supplied to the decomposers, those tiny microbes that help make things rotten. And when oxygen is involved, it's called aerobic. Here at the Tackle Box Bait Shop, we don't have a lot of room either. So we use a compost bin. Anything like this banana peel that can be turned into compost reduces the amount of garbage that heads to the landfill. You know, there's one thing about landfills and garbage dumps that most people don't realize. Garbage in landfills gets buried, and when there's not enough air for aerobic decay to take place, then decay is very, very slow, resulting in some of the trash being preserved, like in a time capsule. Have you ever heard of a garbologist? An archaeologist who studies garbage. One of the world's best-known garbologists is a professor at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Let's go meet him. My name is Bill Rathjay, and I'm a garbologist. We began studying garbage to teach students about how to do archaeology. It was a way for students to sort through their own garbage or modern garbage and understand what our lifestyles were like. 
you might wonder what all the garbage I'm standing on is in this landfill. Well, the vast majority of it is paper. Another thing that's growing in landfills is construction demolition debris. More and more concrete and lumber, that stuff doesn't biodegrade. Things like food waste and yard waste, about half of it will, be, will biodegrade in the first 15 years. The rest of the stuff in here is gonna stay here for at least 100 years and probably a lot longer. The real problem that we have, of course, with landfills is that they're filling up to capacity. We have to keep building new ones. That's difficult to do and it's very expensive. That's why we all have to recycle and we all have to source reduce. We all have to use less stuff in the first place. It's good because it means less and less goes into the landfill. If you buy your cereal in a box like this, it's had 10 ounces of cereal in it, and when it's empty, you can just brush it up. But if you buy 30 ounces, that's three times more cereal in this bag, you can crush it down to even less than the box. That's how you source reduce. That's how you throw less away. Garbage rules, don't be a fool. Use less stuff at home and school, so less garbage comes here. A single person generates nearly six pounds of garbage in a day. That's about a ton of trash per person each year. Holy mackerel! Research shows every person in America throws away about 4.3 pounds of trash every day. Add to that the waste from recreational programs, municipal projects, and construction debris from building things like roads and homes, and the real total is about six pounds of waste for each American every day. This means that the United States generates over 200 million tons of garbage a year, which is enough to fill a fleet of garbage trucks circling the earth six times. That's only America's garbage. The earth's not getting any bigger, and we've got to do something to reduce what's going into our dumps and landfills. That's why you hear so much talk about recycling, reducing, reusing, and repairing. Every year, many cities around the country celebrate Earth Day. There are dozens of activities at this Earth Day festival designed to remind us how amazing the Earth is. And what each of us can do is our part to take care of the Earth. Many of these activities focus on recycling and waste reduction. This is the Banana Slug String Band. They travel all over the country to promote recycling and conservation. Enviro Tackle Box has grabbed a backstage pass. Let's go meet the slugs. Happy Earth Day to you guys. Let me ask you, what is the key to recycling? The key to recycling is make sure when you drink a soda, make sure you don't just throw it away, put it in a recycling bin. We can reuse it. You gotta trash it somewhere. Keep our earth green, put the landfill smaller. Recycling is the key, and you make the choice. When you go out to buy something, are you gonna choose a container that you can recycle or something that you're gonna throw away? The state of Arizona has created an innovative highway recycling program. It involves taking all the old worn out tires in the state and putting them back on the road again. Arizona produces about uh, 5 million waste tires a year. 
And if we didn't have a program to use the tires in our pavements, uh, we'd probably have about uh, 5 million tires a year piling up in various parts of Arizona. Hey, and where do your tires end up? Arizona waste tires or reused tires go to a grinding plant that's on the outskirts of Phoenix, Arizona, and they grind just about all of the tires in the state. We approximately take 4.2 million tires. That's a lot of tires. And recycle them into chrome rubber. From there, they're put into 2,000 pound bags and sent to the uh, site where the paving is gonna take place, dumped into a hopper, and from that hopper, they go into the asphalt itself. The product, asphalt rubber, was invented right here in Phoenix. Then they come out here and they're used as pavement, and they go down just like regular uh, asphalt pavement. This is where the rubber meets the rubber. If you use asphalt rubber, you can increase the crack-free life to seven or eight years, so you can essentially double the life of the pavement. We use it in half as much thickness as normal asphalt, so it saves us money in the long run, giving us a very durable, long-life pavement. We recycle the tires into something that can be used. You can look for source reduction ideas in a store. Matt found a deodorant, but why is he choosing the one that's not in the box? By avoiding the box deodorants, I've helped keep some cardboard out of the landfill. Now what could Holly find here that would reduce the amount of waste in her house? Oh, so she's found a major source of household paper, paper towels. But wait, she's leaving this aisle to search for a replacement. Cloth towels do the same things as paper towels, but we can wash them and use them over and over again. Hindakia found refill bottles for that window cleaner spray device. Some people buy the entire spray device every time they need new cleaner. When they throw that old sprayer away, it just sits in the landfill. I'm going with the refill. Oh, and let's see what Holly's got there. I found a basketball that's in a box, but I can reduce the cardboard waste by buying a basketball that's not in a box. Excellent, Holly. Sometimes, it's a struggle to figure out how to reduce packaging. Some things are wrapped tightly to keep them from being damaged or even stolen. Those big, clunky CD cases are not needed to protect the disc. They're there to prevent theft prevent the disc from easily going into someone's pocket or purse. Some stores remove the big CD case when you buy the item and recycle them. My parents say we can buy this big bag of chips instead of this variety pack of individual chip bags from my lunchbox. We can put a handful of chips in a reusable container and do away with all those individual bags. And most, and most times it's cheaper. <laughs> Next time you go to the store, see if you can find five items that would help reduce the amount of material going into a landfill. At first glance, you might not notice something important happening behind the scenes at the Universal Studios Escape. This theme park is really into recycling and reusing materials. Food is served on ceramic plates instead of styrofoam or paper plates. Where paper products like stationery or napkins are needed, Universal chooses recycled products. In those 3D glasses from movies, they're collected, cleaned, and reused. These efforts not only save the park money, but also keep materials out of the landfill. There are sometimes ways to tell if you're buying recycled products. For example, this logo is used to indicate products made from recycled materials. Like this baking soda, and this pad of legal paper is made up of 100% waste paper. I love this little gizmo here. This lure is made from a recycled soft drink can. See, you can see the logo of the soft drink on the strip of aluminum. Hey, what about old buildings? Sometimes owners say it's less expensive to collapse or implode a structure rather than renovate. In the case of really big buildings, experts time explosions to bring the whole place down. It's quite a sight. Some businesses specialize in recycling and reusing the materials from old buildings. While it's difficult and expensive to do, it can be well worth the effort. I do restoration of old homes and renovation of new ones. Recycling old homes keeps me in business. 
And it saves the environment. Uh, we use old bricks from the outside. We may put those inside. We use old bathtubs. We use old stoves. We use, if we get pipes from underneath the house, we'll take those and we use those for closet rods inside the house. Any other old beams that we can get our hands on that become architectural pieces as well as structural pieces, we use those. Just anything, an old window or an old door, whatever we can find that we can reuse, we try to reuse. When you do that, you save all around. Uh, it saves the home, it saves landfill space, it uh, recycles anything that you can uh, put back into our homes. I mean, it's basically recycling a community. One of the things that Southeast Paper Manufacturing does is process recycled newspaper. The used newspapers are dumped into a pulper where they're washed with water and de-inking chemicals. Next, the fibers of the pulp bond and form a sheet of paper. Finally, the paper is steam dried, wound and shipped to newspaper publishers. The recycling process allows us to use newspaper over and over again, conserving our resources and reducing demand for more landfill space. There are sometimes ways to tell if you're buying recycled products. Some items will tell you right on the label. The words post-consumer content tell you how much of the content is recycled material. This is important because in order for recycling to be successful, we need to buy recycled products. Using recycled products creates the need for finding more things to recycle and that completes the cycle that you see symbolized on many products, using materials over and over again. So the next time you reach for a paper towel to dry your hands, think about your fleet of American garbage trucks circling the globe six times. Imagine how many trucks it would take if we measured trash for the whole world. Instead, look around for that cloth towel. It's source reduction. Snatch junk mail, paper, or newsprint out of the trash and recycle it. There's a symbol on some packaging which indicates that certain materials can be recycled. They haven't necessarily been recycled yet, but they have the potential to be recycled. These are called recyclable materials. In addition to reduction and recycling, we can reuse and repair. Clothing that you've outgrown may still have a lot of wear in it. When something is broken, fix it rather than throwing it away. Finally, why don't you see how long it takes for several items to decay in a compost bin and be ready to wait a long time. See you on the next show. Hey, a rotten tomato, a rotten squash, a rotten banana peel, a rotten pepper, a rotten apple, a rotten chicken, I can't compost that, and a rotten potato. And do away with all those individual bags. And most times it's too much. Oh, look, a baby one. Oh, oh, oh that makes it cute. It's cute. Then. <laughs> a rotten rubber chicken. And it can. Visit our Tackle Box website to learn more.